Could you please tell us uh, how spread is the hate speech against uh, LGBTQIA communities? The hate speech and uh, also violence, especially online, against LGBTQIA communities is increasing. We see, especially online, more and more coordinated attacks of these movements, particularly targeting transgender people, trans individuals. Uh, this is not unique to one country or another. We see it across Europe, particularly at the moment in the UK, where the press has especially fueled some of this rise of anti-trans sentiment uh, through their clickbait uh, and exaggerated features about trans people, who we are and what we ask for. Um, so it's really important that we continue to counter it, especially with like uh, Pride tomorrow. Uh, and as it happens across Europe, um, to have this movement of solidarity and community from the LGBTQI uh, people to, to show us together united. Uh, well, how do you cope with hate speech? Um, what are your rec recommendations about? Yes, of course. So, well, I am a trans person, but I'm also a politician. So I receive hate speech on different levels. I'm sure my colleagues from DOM here, like Maya Morachanin, is also used to having uh, targeted online attacks against what she is saying, perhaps, and what she is proposing in the parliament uh, and what she is talking about, especially on the civil registry law that will allow for the respect of self-determination uh, for trans people to have quick and transparent quick, transparent, and accessible legal gender recognition. So in that aspect, um, politicians are taught to not read the comments, especially on newspapers that might be covering our issues with um, some negativity, and to work with their staff or with their volunteers to have levels of buffers between us and and the online comments. Of course, uh, if you're not a politician and you're a public person or activist or even just going about your normal life and just living your life as an LGBT person, it hits differently because you don't have the same perhaps uh, system around you that is, is, is protecting you. So I think what's important is to take screenshots and keep links of any speech against you online and uh, take these to an LGBTQI organization if it is targeted LGBTQI hate speech online because they would be able to collate all this information that is coming and be able to have a stronger case if they will talk to, for example, police cyber unit about it. Okay, uh, what's the role of the Greens in improving the situation of the human rights of the LGBTQIA communities? The European Greens and our member parties across Europe are working very strongly on all human rights. When it comes to LGBTQI rights, uh, in 2020 we voted a very strong political resolution called Trans Rights Here, Trans Rights Now, which speaks about and to the uh, respect for self-determination and bodily autonomy of transgender people, but also of intersex people. Um, we are also, uh, for example, we've seen in Estonia now this week, the law on equal marriage and the Estonian Green Party were amongst those uh, bigger groups collecting the signatures to push for this change. We are there with civil society and NGOs, and we believe in participatory democracy, where we listen to the people most affected about the issues that affect them. And this is really important so that we can uh, propose laws that are inclusive, just, and uh, contemporary. Uh, can you tell us about your assessment uh, of the situation here in North Macedonia since you're here now? Yes, of course. I've been here very briefly, but before coming here, I had a number of meetings online with various colleagues. And today I will be meeting with some LGBTQI activists as well. And uh, it's uh, concerning to see a rise in anti-gender sentiment, especially coming from the religious groups. It's not surprising, but of course, um, 
you know, we have this false belief perhaps that as time moves on, we become more progressive, but that progress, we need to be working for it every day. And there will always be these ups and downs in terms of attacks against the community. So when it comes to what's happening here in North Macedonia in terms of the gender equality law, uh, we are seeing the same rhetoric and messages as in other countries that try to push for similar laws on gender equality, on gender quotas, on legal gender recognition for trans people. Uh, it's, it's worrying, but I know that there are the right people working on this locally to, to represent and, re and ensure the respect of the rights for, for trans people in, in particular. Um, so I, I hope that, you know, we'll see some good positive changes in the next few weeks. I think overall, my message to um, Macedonians in particular is that you, you should understand what self-determination is about uh, for trans people, because you understand how important it is to choose your own name and choose your own status with respect to other people. And so this is what trans people are asking for, that we are allowed to choose our own names and also choose our status in how we are um, seen by the society as male or female. Um, and, and it's as simple as that. We do not need delays in time. We do not need further barriers. We do not need people patronizing us and telling us who we are because we know ourselves best who we really are. I do have one more thing to say. As a transgender person from Malta, the laws that we have since 2015 that recognize us has supported the us a lot and allow us to live our lives. We see more and more trans people having access to employment and higher education. We see that uh, trans people choose their own journey and take their time if they want to access trans specific healthcare and that this is done with full respect. When we look at the laws that have changed across Europe in the past eight years on legal gender recognition in Malta, in Ireland, Iceland, Belgium, Denmark, and other countries, uh, there has never been abuse of these laws. Transgender Europe, an NGO based uh, in Berlin that works with trans activists across Europe and Central Asia, has done detailed research with the authorities in these countries that have confirmed that when these laws are in place, they support trans people and they do not and they are not a threat to women's equality anywhere.